Welcome to this quick video on the U.S. markets, where we'll cover why you should invest and how to get started with index ETFs. First up, let's talk about where the stock market operates. Major stock exchanges, like the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, or NYSE, are where all the action happens. The NASDAQ operates as a dealer market, meaning investors buy and sell through dealers. On the other hand, the NYSE uses an auction system where buyers and sellers place orders, which are matched up to set prices. Now, how do we track the performance of these markets? That's where stock market indices come in. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ are key indices that reflect market trends. For instance, the S&P 500 tracks 500 large U.S. companies, while the NASDAQ focuses on tech stocks. So, why should you consider investing in the stock market? Investing helps drive economic growth by providing companies with the capital they need to expand. Plus, there are two main ways you can earn money, capital gains and dividends. Capital gains come from selling stocks at a higher price than you bought them while dividends are regular payments from companies to their shareholders. Of course, investing in stocks comes with its risks. You could lose your entire investment if a stock's price falls to zero. Market volatility can also be quite the emotional ride with fluctuations that may test your patience. You can get started by opening a brokerage account with any of the available providers. The stock market is open from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. EST on weekdays, though many brokers offer extended trading hours from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. EST. Investing in the stock market can be a powerful way to build wealth, but it's important to understand both the potential rewards and risks. Capital gains and dividends are the main ways you can profit, and with the right approach, you can navigate the ups and downs of the market. If you're new to Wall Street and looking to start your investing journey, here's a guide to help you get started. Remember, this information is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Be sure to consult a financial advisor before making any investment decisions. In the U.S. market, there are three main indices you need to know about. First, the S&P 500, which represents the top 500 companies in the U.S. If you're unsure about which companies to invest in, you can invest in the index itself by buying an ETF that tracks the S&P 500. Second, the NASDAQ 100, which tracks the top 100 tech companies. Tech is a fast-growing sector, attracting a lot of investment. As a result, the NASDAQ 100 has seen higher returns compared to the S&P 500 in recent years. Third, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, or the Dow, consists of 30 major U.S. companies across various industries. It provides a snapshot of the overall market, but with a more narrow focus. The first step in your investing journey should be to buy an S&P 500 Index ETF. This ETF offers exposure to a diverse range of the largest companies in the U.S., the S&P 500 has delivered a 28% return over the last year and close to 97% over the past five years. While it may not provide the exceptional returns that some individual stocks do, it offers stability and requires less time to manage. Another benefit is that the S&P 500 typically experiences smaller declines during market corrections compared to individual stocks or other indices. Some popular S&P 500 ETFs are SPY, VOO, and SPLG. If you have a smaller amount to invest, SPLG might be a good choice. We will do a detailed comparison of these ETFs at the end of this video. When choosing an ETF, look at factors like the assets under management, the expense ratio, and the dividend yield. As you get more comfortable, consider diversifying your portfolio with a NASDAQ 100 ETF. The NASDAQ 100 focuses on the top 100 tech companies, which have seen significant growth in recent years. The NASDAQ 100 has risen 32% in the last year and 164% over the past five years. However, 
Remember that while this index often outperforms during bull markets, it also tends to drop more sharply during market corrections. The most popular NASDAQ 100 ETF is QQQ, and for those looking for a smaller investment size, QQQM is also an option. If you're looking to diversify even further, consider small cap stocks with the Russell 2000 Index and its ETF, IWM. Although small caps have underperformed in the long term, they can sometimes outperform during specific periods. If you're interested in sectors like semiconductors, the SOXX ETF tracks the SOX index, which includes leading semiconductor companies. Over the past one to five years, SOXX has outperformed both SPY and QQQ, but is more volatile during market downturns. For those interested in cryptocurrencies, the IBIT ETF offers exposure to Bitcoin and can be traded like any other ETF. Once you gain more experience, you might consider investing in individual stocks. This requires more research and monitoring, but the potential for higher returns can be attractive. For example, NVIDIA has seen a 180% increase in one year and 3,000% over five years. Similarly, Meta has risen 80% in one year and 197% over five years. Remember, past performance is not a guarantee of future results. You'll need to monitor quarterly earnings, market reactions, and valuations closely. These are some of the companies we like based on Q2 2024 earnings, and we will continue publishing our top earning picks from time to time. For beginners, a balanced approach is to start with an S&P 500 ETF for stability and gradually add NASDAQ 100 ETFs for growth potential. As you learn more and become more comfortable, you can explore sector-specific ETFs or individual stocks that match your investment goals. If you're outside the US, such as in Canada, you can still invest in these indices through equivalent ETFs like XSP for the S&P 500 and XQQ for the NASDAQ 100. To summarize, starting with well-established ETFs and gradually diversifying your portfolio is a solid strategy for beginners. Consistently reinvesting dividends and investing systematically over time can help you grow your wealth steadily. The key to successful investing is patience, research, and a willingness to learn. Good luck on your investing journey. Finally, let's do a comparison of the top S&P ETFs. The current price of the S&P 500 is 5431, which is the closing price as of June 14, 2024. Let's open a spreadsheet. We will create a simple table here. Let's aim for S&P 5500. If we expect the S&P to rise to 5,500, how can we trade using ETFs to profit from the price increase? If our analysis suggests that it will reach 5,500 in the next couple of days, how do we trade this 70-point price movement? Let's capture the price difference. That would be roughly a 69-point move. In terms of percentage rise, that would be 69 divided by the current price, which is approximately 1.27%. We could trade using futures or individual stocks, but in this video we are mainly focusing on ETFs. Let's take a look at some of the popular ETFs for trading the S&P 500, SPYVOO and SPLG. While considering any ETF, we need to look at their expense ratio which is the management fees that would be charged. Next, you can check the dividend yield. When it comes to high volume, high frequency trading, SPY is the preferred instrument. VOO and SPLG are also quite liquid for trading or investing. Now, which one to buy? Once you have looked at the parameters, you can pick the one that suits you. If you have a very small amount, like $200 or $300, you cannot buy SPY or VO because their per unit price is close to $500. If you have a small amount to invest, then SPLG might suit you more. 
You can easily manage positions and book partial profits by holding an ETF with a smaller price. When the S&P moves 1.27%, these ETFs should also move a 0.27% as they track the index. When the S&P moves from 5431 to 5500, SPY would move from $542 to $549. VOO would move from $498 to $505, and SPLG would move from $63.83 to $64.64. If we have $2,000 to invest, we can buy about 30 units of SPLG and make about $25 profit from this movement. Alternatively, we could also buy about 4 units of SPY or VOO to make a similar profit. If we have very high trading capital, we could trade in SPY or VOO. For lower capital, SPLG would give you more flexibility. This is how we can trade ETFs. We could also look at individual stocks, but if we are not sure which stocks will move when the S&P rises, then ETFs are one way we can take advantage of the price movement. Thank you for watching. This content is for educational and entertainment purposes only. We do not recommend buying or selling any of these instruments or applying any of these strategies without consulting a certified financial advisor. Subscribe to our channel for more informative content in the future.